uh, uh, today again we have another webinar. My name is Ivan Somagwa. I'm an assistant director in land administration and also a full member in the institution of surveyors of Kenya, Lam Chatta. Today, you are most welcome. I can see we are almost 100 first funds and we expect more. And uh, in today's week, now we are handling uh, land rents and the list preparation arising from change of user. We decided to handle both of this because, uh, especially the land rent is very straightforward and the uh, fairly short one. So we thought if we could uh, combine the two, uh, we would be good to go for today's session. So you're welcome. Uh, today, we'll be taken over by Madam Lea uh, so that you're going to be able to, to see how you're supposed to pay rent in the system. Uh, the nearest rent is revenue that is paid to governments and it can be paid by anybody you don't it must not necessarily be a landowner but the most important thing here is to have uh, land details uh, as correct as possible thank you welcome uh, good morning everyone i hope you are all well so i shall be taking you through uh, two processes today uh, land rent payment and uh, list preparation for change of user. So right now I'm currently at the Artisasa uh, landing page, as you can see. So you will log in into your account and enter your details. And then after you logged in, you shall be able, you shall be navigated into this page. We shall see uh, the different services and the different uh, details for your account. So uh, in the different services, uh, we're going to be uh, handling services in the land administration department. So you just, so we're just going to uh, click on view more here under land administration, click on view more, and then you're going to find a service uh, called land rent, and then you shall click there. So uh, one thing to note is land rent is being paid uh, uh, for, uh, nationwide, not only in Nairobi. So if you have a parcel that is anywhere in Kenya that uh, is paid for land rent, you're paying it through the Artisasa system. So you're going to click on the land rent service and then you can enter your uh, parcel number for your parcel. And then I'll just demonstrate how you're going to pay the land rent. So after you have clicked on land rent, so this is the interface you're going to get. So you're going to click on pay land rent and then you will enter your title number here. So I'll just enter my, in this case, my title number, which is uh, Nairobi block. And then you're going to click on search. So after you click on search, you, you will see all the pending invoices for the parcel that you have entered. And uh, if uh, yeah, the rent is late, there should be penalties. So as you can see uh, for this uh, for this parcel, Nairobi Block 118, 1209, uh, if you view on the, the invoice, you're going to see that uh, the rent is 6,000 and there's a penalty fee for 720 for that year. Uh, and then there's a convenience fee for 50 shillings. Uh, since the, all payments right now are being paid to e-citizen, so there's that uh, convenience fee. So um, I'm just going to demonstrate how you, you pay land rent. So after you have searched, you'll see all the invoices, all the pending invoices for your for your um for your parcel number, and then you will click on pay. After clicking pay, shall be navigated to uh, this platform where you're able to make your payment. Uh, and then you shall click your mode of payment. If it's uh, through PESA flow direct or uh, through a debit or credit card or M-PESA, and then you're going to 
uh, you're going to pay in this case, uh, you'll allow me to just uh, mock this payment so that you can continue. So also a uh, point to note is for land rent, you have to pay, uh, you cannot pay the whole amount once. So you have to pay per year so that your invoice can be easy to clear. So in this case, you can realize that I paid uh, the rent, which was for 2018. So uh, the invoices right now, they're only left from 2019 to 2023. And as you pay the uh, the invoices, they, they, they go, uh, uh, they are not there anymore. So after you have finished paying all the land rent invoices, you are able to uh, generate a clearance. Maybe I can just pay for this one. And then we are able to see how we can get a clearance. So as I mentioned, uh, land rent is being paid uh, nationwide. So if if you have a parcel that is in, uh, uh, say, in Nakuru, you can just come and enter your details, and uh, you're able to you're able to to pay your land rent. So I can just show an example of a parcel that is not that is not in Nairobi, and show how how you will enter the details. So for a parcel that is not in Nairobi, we'll just write it as it appears in your certificate of lease or title, or certificate of lease, uh, like this, for example, is in Akuru Municipality, block 90 slash 490. And then after clicking this, after clicking this, you're going to click on search and uh, your invoices will be, uh, you will receive your pending invoices here. In case you receive a notification that states, uh, please contact customer care, please contact customer care through uh, our chat box or our contact uh, down there on, uh, on, our, on our services, on our services down there. So you're able to contact customer care and they're able to create a ticket for you and your land rent invoices are able to be updated and you can pay them. So uh, when you click uh, in any parcel number, you're going to receive your invoices and you can pay them. So after, after paying them, you can also generate a clearance. So in this case, I can just show how to get a clearance. If you have any questions, you can uh, put them in the chat and then we can take them after finishing this uh, presentation for land rent. So if you want to get clearance, you'll just navigate to your, to your services, land rent, and then you'll see this button for get clearance. And then uh, here you'll enter the title number for the parcel you want your clearance certificate from. And then you'll just enter your uh parcel number and you will get your clearance certificate and then you're able to download to download your clearance certificate for for the parcel and also you're able to after paying land rent uh, you're able to also download your receipt uh, for future reference yeah so if you have any question you can ask at this point Uh, our chat box is open, so just in case you have anything, you can you can just uh, write there, so that we can be able to respond. Uh, but I believe this one is just straightforward because it's a question of just making payments on annual basis. Once you clear, you can get your clearance, so you don't need to walk to the offices uh, looking for. Uh, the, 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 this is a facilitating convenience from the comfort of where you are, so long as you have the details and you have the money. Thank you. Maybe just a point to also note, if uh, your parcel number is either IR or LR, you will just write the number, don't write LR. So if it is, uh, for example, it is LR, 
79.15 slash 12. You'll just write 79.15 slash 12. And when you search, you'll be able to see the land rent invoices for that particular parcel. So if it's uh if it's not uh Nairobi, if it's not a block number, just write the IR or LR number and you're able to see the land rent invoices. Also, land rent can be paid by anyone. You can pay land rent for someone else and uh you can use any account to pay land rent. It's not attached to the owner's account to pay land rent. No. So we have one question on the chat. Uh, what's the difference between land rates and ground rates and ground rent? So Mr. Evans can respond to that. Then there's a question, can one see the land rent paid for the previous years if they're not the ones who paid for it in the system? Or can one see the land rent paid for previous years if they are not the ones who paid for it in the system? Evans? Uh, let me take this one of uh, differentiating. Actually, I think there are not three. Uh, as you put the difference between the land rates, ground rates, and the ground rent. Eh? The issue is we have land rent and land rates. So I hope that one is clear. That's the difference. We have the land rent and land rates. And then now, the land rent is the revenue which is paid to government, and it's usually indicated on the title. The title that you have, there is somewhere where, you're, where it's written that it is what is supposed <laughs> to be paid as land rent, and it's very clear, the government with an effective debt. Then the land rates, this one is not indicated on the title. And at the same time, it's not paid directly to the government. It is paid to the county government within the jurisdiction where that parcel lies. If for all parcels that lie within Nairobi, the land rates is paid to the Nairobi county government. For the parcels within, the up and centers usually, in if it's Nakuru, uh, Nakuru municipality, Nakuru city, uh, I think it has been upgraded to Nakuru city, all the rates are paid to Nakuru uh, county government, and they have the details. So if you are not sure how much you are supposed to pay, it's a question of visiting their offices and they will be advised how much you are supposed to pay. If it's for Mombasa, the same thing. If it's for Kisumu, the same thing. So. I hope that's clear. Land rent is payable to government and it's through this, this system. The land rent is not taken care of in this system because it's due to the county governments. Thank you. So uh, for rent that has been paid, that uh, has been paid in, uh, if, uh, for example, I'm the person who has paid, I will see the invoices here. If I'm not the person who has paid, I am not able to see uh, the paid invoice, but if there is a pending invoice, you can see it. But if you need to confirm that it was paid, you can just generate a clearance. If there is no balance, you'll be able to get your clearance. And if there's any pending land rent, you'll be able to see the unpaid invoice. I think, I uh, don't know if that's clear. Yeah, but uh, like, for example, I had paid rent for this particular parcel numbers. I can be able to see the invoices for the for the ones I've paid for. But if you are not the person who paid, you cannot see these ones, but uh, you can get clear a clearance. I don't know if we have any other question. Yeah, we have a hand up yeah. from uh, Evans Mwangi. Evans, you can go ahead and ask a question. Thank you for that. I wanted Evans to repeat because uh, what he had explained about the ground rates. And you want to repeat, eh? Yes, I want to repeat. Yes, the so differentiation because 
uh -huh. a, al del ground rent, oh, ground rent. Dos, I say it. Yes. I, I say it. Let's forget, let's remove the word ground there. Eh? Let's yes. work with rent. It's rent, and then there's rent and rates. Yeah? Okay. So we are saying yes. rent rent and rent rates. For rent rent, it's paper government, and the details are on the title that you have, if you have one. And it is taken care of, the payment is done within this system, as we are explaining here. Yes. So that one is paper to national government. From wherever you are, whether it is Kitale, whether it is Kisumu, whether it's Mombasa, wherever it is. Then the rates is paper to the respective county governments. For, okay, it, it may also, for, for the land rent is the revenue. That's part of the revenue that is paid to government. And for the rates, it is for the services that are offered by the respective county governments. So for that ground, wherever that you have occupied, the rates that the, the fees that is paid in terms of rates for the services that are offered by the respective county government. That one is not taken care of in this system, but you deal with it on the respective with the respective county government. It could be Kisuma, as I've said, it could be Meru, it could be Unanyuki, wherever wherever you are, wherever that buffer is. I hope that's clear. It is clear. And okay. also, okay. there was a, a question that was not answered. Uh, can one see the land rate paid for previous years if they are not the ones who paid it for the for it on the system? Is um, it possible? Uh, uh, I think I had answered, but I'll just repeat. Uh, if you're not the person who have, who paid the invoice. Uh, you're not able to see the the receipt, but if you need uh you need clarification on whether it was paid, you can just get the clearance if there's no pending land rent, and if there's any pending land rent, you're able to see it from there. But if it had already been paid, but in another account, you'll just see that there's no uh invoice for that particular. So if someone had paid your rent for maybe 2019 to 2022, you're not able to see those in the uh, those receipts. But you can see, or, or you can see the pending invoice for the current maybe year twenty twenty three. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Evans too. Um. Uh, 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 the person who has the hand up maybe can you just go ahead and ask the question. Uh, my name is Wakiliono. I have a question. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. I I I was paying land rent for a corporate client. Uh, this was last year, and I requested for an invoice, which came out in January. Unfortunately, as is the norm with most corporate clients, by the time the RTGS payment was being done. I would, the payment was being done in February and the penalties had already started accumulating. Uh, to date, this is from last year, to date, the penalties still keep accumulating. Uh, the land rent has never been reflected in the system. I've raised the issue on Adi Sasa and uh, it keeps telling me that it's with the accounts department. It's uh, been more than a year. Uh, so, oh, uh, sorry about that, but uh, if you have had already made the payment and you have a receipt for it, uh, you can just maybe through the customer care, you can uh, uh, you can uh, get to us. Maybe we're able to follow up with that. We also, at the end of this meeting, we'll share an email where you're able to uh, send uh, any issue that you might be having. But uh, in this case, uh, the, when you share the receipt, we will be able to clear the balance that you 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 had paid. But unfortunately, I think for the penalties, you'll have to pay them since uh, it is assumed that you had not paid rent. So the penalties are accrue. So you, you'll just pay the penalties. But for the amount that you had cleared, it shall be cleared. Yeah. I don't know if okay, that's thank you. okay. Thank you. Okay, you're thank welcome. You. I think uh, Sandra was asking, are freehold parcels charged for rent? 
and end rates. I think that's what she meant to say. Uh, freehold parcel do not have rent. Yes. Um. Uh, I think Lindsay was asking, what is the consequence of not obtaining a land rent clearance certificate from the from the vendor when purchasing land? So, um. Right now, currently in the system, you're not able to do a transfer application if you have pending land rent invoices. So uh, there is an advantage because you'll not be able to get land that has uh, arrears of, of, of land rent. But in case you had already purchased it, at the point of making uh, another transaction, you shall be required to uh, uh, clear the balances. But uh, it's not a requirement to have the uh, clearance. You just have to have cleared the land rent. We don't ask for the clearance anymore as a requirement. Yes. Uh, another small clarification, but I hope uh, my colleague Rhea has talked about it. Our flow in parcels charged the rents and the rates. Uh, I think for rents, as we did indicate, it must have been indicated on your title. If it's not there and it's a free old person, then you don't need to put up, put up going for an extra mile of rent to pay rent because the details will not be there and by extension, you're not required to pay. But for rents, if the parcel falls within the jurisdiction of a municipality or whichever uh, uh, county you are, it is good to check with the county government if the end rates to be paid. Thank you. I think Solomon is also asking, uh, what about the parcel that is not in the system and the section of property titles? So if your parcel is not in the system, uh, you shall uh, initiate a chat through the customer care. They'll be able to create a ticket for you and you're able to update uh, the land the land rent uh, details for your parcel. Uh, and you will be required to upload a copy of your title so that that information can be can be uploaded, uh, sorry, uploaded and you're able to make the payment. Yeah, uh, for section of property, if it has rent, it will also be uploaded. I think uh, there's also someone else has a question. Address, inserting of title numbers. Sometimes the title number has a slash, but you have to contact customer care to advise that they remove it so that the property reflects. So I think uh, what we're insisting is, uh, especially if the parcel is not uh, in Nairobi, kindly just write it as it appears in the uh, in your title so that the person who is updating the rent invoices is able to also update according to how it appears on the title. So if you write a different name and the person receives the copy of a title and they, uh, and they update the rent invoices under a different name, which is uh, different from what you had given, you'll not be able to still find the uh, rent invoices. So kindly just put it as it appears. Also, I've asked uh, payment of land rent invoices. Is it okay for the demand to come showing uh, different years, but payments to be done? I'm not sure I understand your second question. Uh, if uh, if land rent is paid to the wrong property, so if this uh, is the case, you can just reach us through customer care and uh, we're able to see what uh, if uh, the issue can be sorted and you shall be advised accordingly. Um, I think also you've asked uh, the ease of viewing invoices without re-inputting the title number and searching every time. So as... Uh, uh, currently, we are uh, sorting that so that you're able to see the the uh, the invoices without having to input the title number. But for now, for you can maybe download the invoice. It's downloadable. Uh, you can download it for viewing, so that you're able to refer to it. Can one pay uh, for a part? Uh, there, there is this number two above that uh, was not very clear, but I thought what. Uh... This is a uh, Lima. Lima meant is a question of uh, consolidating the years so that uh, if it's uh, 10 years pending from VP 10, uh, something like that, up to 2023, uh, I think you are asking if it can be possible that it can be consolidated together. 
For now, in the system we are providing for the annual cases, and you start with the 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 the, the, the oldest the, the 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 last year you come up, but we are working on a possibility of uh, consolidating adding port because sometimes they can you know this random can be too much, eh? and you may not be able to have all the man at once. So this one also caters for in the event that what you have is not cannot be able to pay entirely for whatever that is pending, you can be able to go on the annual basis. But at the same time, we are also working on a provision of consolidating all the years so that in case you want to pay at once, it can be paid while still catering for uh, annual basis. I think that's what uh, you're asking. And I believe uh, we have answered that. Then there's this, uh, can one pay for a person that is not related in the system? Yes. Because uh, actually the system now, we for the Sasa system is in Nairobi County, and uh, we, are, we are rolling out to other counties. But as you realize for 100, even if you have uh, a protein in Pusia, it can be paid. It is not limited. So issue of enumeration, don't worry. It can be paid by anybody from whichever corner, so long as you have the details. Uh, Tobias is uh, is asking, please expand on the payment of land rent in relation to section or title. So if you have a section or title and you're supposed to pay land rent, uh, then uh, you will just pay land rent in the same uh, way that we have explained. So you'll just uh, you'll just enter your number, your your parcel number, and uh, the invoices will populate. If your property does not have rent then you will not be required to pay rent. Um, um, if anyone else has a question, maybe they can ask. I think we shall be taking the questions for land rent up to 10.45 so that we're able to proceed to the next application. Uh, what about the rural areas? Uh, for the rural areas, if your parcel indicates that you're supposed to pay rent, you'll also pay rent through uh, the Arthisasa. But if your, par if your parcel does not have rent, then you don't pay rent. How will you know? It's uh, indicated in your on your title, so you'll just see. I have the title, but I don't see anything. If there is no rent indicated, then uh, you are not supposed to pay rent. If there was rent that was supposed to be paid, it's indicated. Oh, maybe you inquire from the registrar or the land offices. What 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 type of title do you have, madam? Because. Uh, uh... You know, usually land rent applies to, to leases. Yeah? Uh, if it is a title deed, then obviously there is no there is no rent to pay. It is also will confirm the kind of title that you have. But then, as we did indicate, it is very clear that this land rent, this is the amount, and from the debt that is supposed to be paid. Uh, it's not a lease; it's a title deed. If it's a title deed. Clearly, title deed or title deeds, there is no payment of uh, land rent. But if they fall within a jurisdiction of uh, of uh, what we can call uh, the, 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 the municipality boundary, especially in those rural counties, chances are there will be some, some rate to be paid. But for land rent, no. Okay. okay. I think uh, there is a question from Joshua. Uh, mm -hmm. You're asking that Section 23 of the Business Amendment Act uh, of LRA requires land rent clearance certificate to be obtained uh, from national government prior to registration of a transfer uh, or creation of interest. How is it that you're now saying that transfer cannot occur without payment of land rent? So I think we are, we are. It is not a requirement to have the clearance certificate, but uh, as an individual, it's a requirement to pay land rent. So we are, we are, the only requirement is for you to pay the land rent. We don't ask for the clearance certificate. Uh, 
Sorry. Uh, I, to add on to that, I think it's important also to realize that uh, land rent is an obligation. You don't want to be asked that you are supposed to pay land rent. Actually, the, 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 the comments, you are the only time you cannot be charged penalty is within January. Beyond January, then the penalty for that year or whatever remaining amount starts to accrue. So it's an obligation for the landowners to ensure that land rent is paid. Uh, and uh, it's also important to know that uh, whatever that's due to government has to be paid, however long it takes. Thank you. I think uh, someone had requested to see where, in the case where the land rent is not updated. So I'm just going to. So in the case where your title indicates uh, uh like Nakuru municipality block that sixty seven, then uh you'll you'll be notified, please. Uh you are unable to process your request at the moment, contact customer care and then you'll just contact customer care and they're able to update your rent invoices. So uh are the owners usually notified in writing whenever the land rent is revised or they just receive an invoice reflecting the new rate. I think uh, maybe Mr. Evans can explain on land revising the land rent. Uh, it's a question from James. Sorry, James. Uh, I think I I missed that one, but I regret it. I want to clarify on two issues as I get that question from on vision. Somebody is asking, can you show the sample of where rent is indicated and the where not indicated? I, I, I think we have uh, explained that uh, rent is applicable to these old properties. So wherever you have a lease, there must be somewhere on the top, or on, the, on the page one, on the top page of that title, there is land rent. This land rent, uh, actually, they, they, they are the word land rent which could either be a figure which is given, or in some cases, they could write paper code, where uh, if demanded. So if it's written paper code, if demanded, then you are not paying rent for the time being. But at some time, the government may start uh, asking for that rent. And uh, where not indicated is where if it is uh, an absolute title, or a resolved title, which you are not for the time being, you are not supposed to pay, it is very clear. Please. And uh, of course, we, we, you are, you are, our customer care is very open. You can, even, you can even take a photo of the top page, you can send and share so that you can be guided appropriately. It is very clear. At the same time, if you went to our system and tried to put the type, the, 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 uh, the plot number, it will tell you if there are no details. So it's very clear. Do we, there is another question from Marion in Changa, do we need to pay uh, rates for flood absolute titles? As I did indicate, if the plot falls within the jurisdiction of an up and center, within a county, the respective county government, then you have to check with that respective county government and see uh, how rates are paid. But for rent, you don't pay. Thank you. I think maybe for James for land rent uh, revision, uh, upon uh, doing maybe a list preparation uh, for different, uh, through different applications, uh, your land rent uh, will be, can be revised when it's taken to, when it's uh, forwarded to the valuation department. Yeah. I can I can take up that the issue of uh, rent revision. Uh, 
all leasehold properties, they have uh, the DRV rent and it's indicated. But in the event that you change, because uh, uh, leasehold properties are assigned to different users, at some point you may wish uh, to do a transaction on that parcel of land in a change of user from, say, residential to industrial, from whatever it's residential to commercial, then at that point, there's an element of revision of that rent rent so that uh, it can go in tandem with the, uh, the current uh, rates. So there's an element of that rent revision which is done upon a change of user. If you are doing uh, a subdivision, then there's a portionment of rent which now changes what was paid previously to what's paid at the moment. Then uh, there's also a provision. The government in its own affiliation, they can decide that now uh, there's a need to change and to, 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 to revise rent. That is why within your title, there is room, there is somewhere that is written if revisable. That means, and which is usually after like 10 years. So if you find your rent has been revised, then it's already provided for. But for now, whatever that is written, that's what you are supposed to pay. But there's provision for that revision of rent rent. If it is a transaction or if the government decides that now uh, there's rent that is supposed to be paid for particular areas, it can revision can be done. I hope I've answered that. Uh, I think uh, Sarah wanted to make a few clarifications. I think somebody has asked uh, uh, peppercorn, 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 peppercorn. This is a term that is used. Uh, usually, uh, when there's peppercorn, that means no rent has been indicated there. But on peppercorn terms, that's on minimal terms. Uh, you can assume that there is no rent that is paid wherever there is that peppercorn. Otherwise, if there was rent to be paid, then you don't. We cannot have both. We cannot have rent and the peppercorn at the same time. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Evans. I just wanted to make a, a few clarifications about the issues we've been experiencing with payment of land rent on the system. Uh, the first um, pointer would be to pay rent on the day when you generate the invoice. So as has been explained, rent accrues an, a penalty if not paid on time. So rent is due in January of every year. So every uh, every day after January, there's a penalty that accrues. So if on the system I search for my rent payable in January and proceed to make a payment against the same invoice in February, there'll be an amount that will not be covered because the penalties have begun accruing. So if you search for the rent and see an invoice that you're not ready to pay, Whenever you're ready to make the payment, you can just go and search afresh so that if the amount has changed, you make a payment against the current amount that is inclusive of penalties. Uh, also, pay the exact amount that is stated on the invoice. So there are people who are used to adding a few shillings, rounding it up, and uh, sometimes maybe they would want to... I uh, utilize this payment for uh, rent for another year. That will be quite difficult. So if the rent uh, say states 991 shillings, it would be very uh, effective if you paid exactly that and not 1,000 shillings or 900 shillings so that the amount you're paying is exactly the invoice amount. Then for the RTGS payments, uh, the bank payments are very specific that you have to make payments well before the end of the month. And uh, th this has been captured in our instructions. So for it to be captured in the right time, you have to make this payment. Uh, I think it's uh, three or five days before the end of the month so that your payment is reflected as you would expect it. So for RTJ specifically, you have to be very careful about the date when you're making your payment. And also bear in mind the date when this payment will mature so that it can reflect. But for the issue that was raised, uh, as was said, you can share the details and we'll follow it up. Then uh, there are people who have converted titles. So my title was Dagoretti uh, Riruta 1422. 
And I go ahead and do a conversion on the platform and get an Nairobi Block 66, for example. Then for the payment of rent, if I do not get rent for Nairobi Block 66, I proceed to make payments against Dagoretti. So would advise that after you have brought on your, your parcel to the system, you now proceed with transactions against the new parcel number. So if you have already done a conversion process and the rent uh, does not show, you raise a ticket so that we update the record. So you don't, you don't proceed to continue making payments against the old title number. So just to avoid confusion, after you have started transacting on the system, that number that you're using is the one that you should be paying rent against. So again, if you make a subdivision, uh, you don't go and pay rent against the mother title. Even if you find the record, you not pay rent against the mother title. So you make payments against the current parcels. And um, just for information purposes, all our payments are now going through eCitizen. So the payment instructions uh, you'll notice have changed slightly. So be careful when making the payments to use the payment instructions indicated on uh, the Adisasa invoice. Because the payments have changed, we were previously using a payment gateway called Taifa Pay. But now, according to the presidential directive, we have all moved to processing all payments through eCitizen. So kindly take note of that so that we avoid any confusion. Also, do not make any payments for rent to KRA. We make payments through Adisasa, and the payment channel uh, for receiving money will be uh, the eCitizen payment platform. So that's just a clarification I wanted to make. I hope we can proceed now. Uh, uh, thank you. I can see somebody is querying on uh, the counties among the 47 that fully digitized uh, on land uh, such as online. I think this work in progress. You, you may not have the exact number, but then most of our registries, we are, we are, we are, we are uh, trying to do our best so that uh, at the end of the day, we are fully digitized. Uh, but for Nairobi, Nairobi, you are very sure, and uh, quite a number of uh, uh, registries. Maybe when a is within, uh, he may give, uh, but getting an exact number it may not be easy at the moment. Then there is uh, this Solomon of Panda who wants a who wants a demonstration on how the ticket platform works. I think the ticketing that is a uh, that's a service that is offered. Uh, you as a client, you don't decide that what you want is a ticket. So because you are coming in, you want some service to be done, and through our chat platform, it is now it depends on the kind of service that you want. If there is need that a ticket is raised, you will be advised accordingly. You you, you don't you don't just come in that you say now me I want a ticket. So it's a question of just coming in with the, with the, with the service that you. You want and then you will be, you, you, you be served. Thank you. Uh, so I think uh, we can uh, maybe proceed to the next process because of time. And maybe you can just drop your questions at the chat section. We can take them after the presentation. I think our next presentation will be list preparation for change of visa. Maybe Mr. Evans can tell us. Uh, a little about the application and then I can demonstrate how the process is done. Thank you. Uh, at change of user, uh, as, as I did mention, uh, all the leasehold properties, actually all land in Kenya, they are assigned specific uses. Uh, and the uses would include, but not limited to, residential purposes, commercial purposes, uh, we can have industrial purposes, we can have uh, learning institutions, we can have uh, even agricultural. Uh, for your information, all the absolute titles, they fall under agricultural use. It is assumed that wherever you have an absolute uh, title, it is deemed to be used for agricultural purposes uh, and not another use. So once you have such a title and you feel that uh, for to put optimum use 
of that parcel of land, you may wish to change it to something else. It is upon that that you now apply for the for the for the change of user. And to start this is to is to approach uh, a registered planner uh, who could be able to do his professional work, can analyze the situation on the ground, can prepare his uh, the reports, and then make an application to the respective county government where that parcel of land falls. Once the application is, is done to the right county government, they can be able to look at it because they usually have their planning uh, departments. They look at it, they have sittings, they look at it, and if, if they allow, then you will be issued with a, a document which we call PPA2. I think now it is called Plupa Plupa2, something like that, which demonstrates that they have uh, accepted your application, but usually they give uh, conditions there too, that now you can be, you are allowed to change to, if it's industrial purposes, uh, subject to one, two, three, four, five. So once you get that, that's what you upload when you come now to the land administration uh, department. You you go to change of user and you upload that document in the system together with uh, a copy of the title and uh, uh, another relevant documents that you could be having for purposes of. Of, uh, of approval. Once it is approved, then uh, a title can now be processed in respect of that parcel of land and it will be advised to surrender that the existing title for issuance of a new title, which would be having, among other things, the new user, the new proposed user, uh, obviously the new rent because the rent will be revised and uh, the term will not change. Uh, because if uh, the title, if the term was starting in 1980, it will remain the same. Uh, if if the owner was John Mwangi, it will remain the same as John Mwangi. Uh, the, 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 the area of that land, of course, will not change unless, for some reason, you asked during planning purposes, maybe, maybe, maybe to surrender a few uh, meters for purposes of uh, road widening, uh, for convenience purposes, but if not, then the area will also remain the same. And then now, uh, you can make that application uh, so that you can send that title for for a new title to be to be processed and then issued to you. I think in brief, that's what I can say as we let Leah come in for the specifics. Thank you. Uh, so I shall be uh, explaining uh, the list preparation for change of user. So after you have done your development, con uh, or maybe before I go to list preparation, maybe I can just uh, show the ticketing process. So after a ticket has been generated for you, you shall find it under my tickets here. So it shall be here. And then uh, you will find it under the ongoing tickets. And if it's a ticket maybe for land rent, it will be to the Department of Land Administration. And then inside the ticket where it's written, write a message, you are able to, uh, uh, the officer is able to write to you and you and you're able to communicate. You're also able to attach a file. So if you're supposed to attach a, a certificate of title or lease, you will attach it here. So tickets uh, come up in uh, two different ways. So it can be generated through customer care. So you'll find your ticket, uh, it will be shown here under my ticket. It can also be generated during uh, when doing an application, like uh, this particular ticket I've opened is for document surrender. So uh, this ticket is, uh, uh, upon closing this ticket, it, it indicates that uh, you have surrendered your document. So the ticket is closed by the uh, the land officer. Yeah, so I think that's the ticketing process. Basically, you're able to chat with the land admin officer or the officer in charge uh, from this uh, point. So I'll just uh, explain the list preparation for change of user. So under the services, uh, land administration will click on view more. 
and then there's list preparation. So if you have not yet obtained your uh, letter, your approval letter, you will uh, initiate the process through development control and then maybe uh, do a change of visa until you get the final approval, which will now use to uh, come and do list preparation. So after obtaining the final approval, you'll go to survey and do your resurvey or subdivision or amalgamation. And then after doing that, you'll come and now initiate the list preparation here. So there are different list preparation types, but for today we shall be explaining the change of user. So the, the flow is uh, is the same. Uh, so I'll just explain this and the, the flow is more or less the same. So after clicking on change of user, you'll see a button on your right, you'll click on new application and then you'll see the FAQ. So in all our processes that are different uh, frequently asked questions that are indicated there to help you navigate uh, through your application and then you'll click on next. So you'll see this is list preparation for a uh, change of user. And then you'll enter your parcel number. So in this case, um, the pass my parcel number is, this is my parcel number, Nairobi block 119 slash uh, 1191. And then you'll enter the reference number. So this is the reference number that appears on your approval letter that you are given after you finish the development control process. So you'll enter it as it appears. And then you'll enter any additional details. Maybe if this parcel had been converted, maybe you can indicate here previously was, uh, was parcel this. Have any information? You can just uh, write not applicable. In this case, maybe I can write uh, this person is not uh, no developments made. And then click on next, and then you will attach your final approval letter. So, uh, In just a minute. So you will choose a document from your. Oh, sorry. Uh, so, uh, and then you'll attach your final approval letter, and then uh, for you'll also attach a copy of your certificate. And then uh, also you will be required to attach a copy of your RIM amendment letter to show that you have already finished the survey process or the authentication slip. So if you have uh, if you had done your survey manually, you have an RIM amendment letter. So I can just, so you'll have uh, under the additional documents. So you'll write RIM amendment letter. And then you will choose your file from your uh, computer. If you have any other files to ascertain your application, you can just enter them here. Maybe your ID, if your name does not appear the same way or an affidavit, and then you're able to choose uh, a file from your, from your computer, from the machine that you're using. And then after adding the documents, you're going to click on next, and then you can submit your application. So I think uh, as as you can see, so if you enter a file that is not in a supported format, uh, it will not go through. 
So I'll just enter a file that is uh, either a PDF document or uh, or JPEG. Yeah, so I'll, I'll just reattach the documents and then we can proceed. Just allow me to input the details once more. Tito kuna kuna neto. So after creating uh, your application, uh, you will see your application there it has been created a few seconds ago. And when you click on view, so two things uh, will happen. Um, an invoice will be generated for the surrender fee because you need to surrender your title and you also need to surrender your title. So at this point, a ticket is created for you. So as I had earlier explained, uh, tickets are uh, some tickets are auto generated uh, uh, for purposes of surrender. So in this case, uh, we are going to proceed and uh, and uh, and pay the invoice and pay the invoice for surrender. And I'm going to mock this payment. Uh, and then also uh, maybe as I can demonstrate, uh, a ticket has been in, has been uh, generated here a minute ago to the land registration department where you're going to uh, surrender your title. Uh, so when you click the ticket, you can see the ticket details. Also an appointment has been uh, created. So in this case, an, an invitation has been sent to you. So you can click on your invite and then you can uh, pick a day and time when you're available to come and surrender your title. So you can come on that in then select time at 10 and submit. So after submitting this invitation moves from an invitation to an upcoming appointment. So uh, when it's an upcoming appointment, you are able to view it and you're able to generate a gate pass, which you can download and uh, you will show the gate pass when, when coming to our offices. So you're able to download it and, uh, uh, and print it and come with it or just show it on your phone. So uh, uh, all these processes, when your application is created, you receive a notification. When you surrender your title, that is upon the ticket being closed, you receive a notification. So the system is very interactive. So you're able to know uh, at every stage of your application. So um, at this point, uh, we have paid the invoice and uh, and our ticket has already been closed. So you can see at this point, you're able to submit our request and you can also cancel. So if uh, you have made any uh, mistake and you wish to cancel this application at this point, the cancel button is active, uh, but you're going to submit this request. And at this point, when you make the submission, this application will be now, now at a land, admin, uh, a land administration officer desk who will be able to, uh, to work on it. So this application might, if it's a leasehold property that has rent, might be, uh, will be forwarded to the valuation department for rent revision. I think someone had asked about rent revision and then you're able to, you will receive a notification for uh, your new grant, uh, for your rent and an invoice called a new grant. Uh, maybe if anyone has questions about that, uh, you can ask uh, 
so that we can now show the next process of now paying the uh paying the new grant fees. I think uh, someone is asking where the change of user process had begun a while back and the uh, new number issued was was an LR which has now been listed for conversion. How do you go about completing the process? So um, uh, I, I, we would love to know where you had reached in your process. If you already had received uh, your list document or uh, uh, where you are and then maybe we are able to advise accordingly. But in the case where you had not uh, started and your LR number had been gazetted for conversion, you will just enter your LR number. So I can just indicate here where the parcel number is. You will indicate your LR number. So in this case, um, in this case, you will just write the number like that. You will not write LR or IR. Just the number, enter the reference number before, enter additional details, and also attach the relevant documents, and then you're able to submit your application. And then your list document and your certificate shall uh, now come out in the new number that was gazetted in this case. Oh, the name of the document issued after application to the county government. I don't know if you're asking about the recommendation letter or the uh looper DC twelve, which is which was previously the PPA two. But uh, those are the documents uh, that come from the county government. Uh, I think it what on what uh, Madam Lea said. It's important to note that uh, this uh, change of user application or process, it has a public participation uh, item, which uh, sometimes uh, either we don't notice uh, as Kenyans because uh, wherever there is a proposed change of user, uh, there are two areas that makes the people uh, in that area uh, that are expected to know what's happening, there is usually supposed to be uh, uh, is it uh, an advert on the on that person that there is a proposed user from this. Maybe somebody wants to come up with a school. Maybe somebody wants to come up with an industry. Whatever it is, yeah. So it's good to pay attention uh, when you are walking around to see what is coming up, and at the same time, to add on top of that, <coughs> it's also subjected to newspaper advertisement, which we are also sub expected as Kenyans now, uh, either to raise any objections if you feel like there is anything, so that we don't wait until uh, when the project is up and running, then people start asking when did this start, uh, you know. Uh, so it is just important to be, to be alert what is happening because the change of user as a public participation uh, item within its process. Thank you. Uh, I think James is asking if uh, the change of user process is the same where the LESO is the county government and not the national government. So I think currently, as we had explained, as the SASA has been rolled out to Nairobi County. So if your, if your parcel is in Nairobi, uh, you can still uh, use this process uh, because you have the details and then you're able to process and do your list preparation. But if it's not in Nairobi County, uh, you cannot do it on this as a platform. And on the same, <clears throat> uh, it is never lost. If the LSO is the county government, it will remain the county government because uh, within a special like Nairobi, there are some sections within Nairobi that are managed by the county government uh it will not uh, the details as they are they have to be captured all along so that the current government remains for that particular person if, it, if uh, the current government was the lesso it remains to be the lesso if the national government the national government will remain as the lesso i think also i would like to add that planning is a concurrent function 
So that's why we'll see both the involvement of the respective county government through issuance of approvals, and the same has to also be done at the national level. So the Plupa DC-12, Plupa DC-17, those are documents that are issued and consumed by the county government. And uh, they have also to come and pro complete the process. So it, we're going to see for all development control applications, we see both the involvement of the county government, the respective county government, and the national government working their own specific functions on the system, as has been shown by Leah. So uh, I think at this stage, our application, which we initiated nine minutes ago, uh, is back to us and it's on the pending tab. Uh, I think uh, maybe I can explain this tab. So if your application is under the pending tab, that means the application is pending action from you. If it's on the ongoing tab, that means you have uh, uh, done, you have already submitted your application and it is sitting uh, in an officer's desk. If it's under the completed tab, that means it's completed. If it is canceled, that means before you submitted this application to the ministry, you canceled it. If it has been rejected, that means the application has been rejected with reasons and you're able to see the application and the reasons for the rejecting. So application that we initiated uh, is here and it's pending, so we can click on view. Upon clicking on view, you can see it's saying, please pay the pending invoices and submit the application process of the leases. We also received a notification. So uh, an, invoice, an invoice has been generated for change of user for this application that uh, we are doing. Uh, so, so this is the application that we are doing. And then when you navigate to the different tabs, you can see the document. So when you go to the invoices, you will see a new fee for a new grant fees and you're able to view the invoice. So the invo invoice has a stamp duty. It has the registration fee for 500, it has conveyancing fee. And if this is a leasehold parcel, it has rent uh, that has been uh, revised where, uh, where after going to valuation. And then it has a convenience fee uh, because you're paying this uh, payment to eCitizen. So you'll click on back. And uh, under the invoices tab, we are able to make payment. So the first thing you'll do is make the payment. Yeah, so in this case, I'll make this payment. And then uh, go to where the leases are. So where the leases are, you shall see your parcel. So in the case where this application was for a subdivision application, you will see the different subplots listed here. And uh, for every subplot, there's a new grant fees for every subplot. So that if the, these were four subdivisions, you'll see four invoices for new grant fees. And you are able to now see the different uh, parcels for the subplots. In this case, it's a change of user, so it's the same parcel. We're going to click uh, here. Uh, and then we are going to add the beneficiary details. So in this case, uh, you can click who is there, uh, the ownership, if it's a, the beneficiary, if it's a sole proprietor or joint proprietor or proprietorship in common, and then you'll enter their RCSS ID. In the case where the beneficiary, uh, the person who is on the approval letters, the beneficiary is not the same person you're quoting here. You'll have to either uh, give the grounds for change. Is it through letters of administration or will, or maybe through a court order? And you're also able to attach the relevant documents uh, to ascertain that. And then you're able to enter the now the new uh, beneficiary who um, who is being quoted. So in this case, uh, our beneficiary is the same person who is appearing on the on the on the letter. So you will enter the RCS ID of the beneficiary and also enter the ownership rights. Is it a proprietor, administrator, trustee, liquidator, or trustee in bankruptcy? We're going to select proprietor and add the beneficiary. After adding the beneficiary, you'll click on next, and then you will upload any additional documents. So you have, if you have documents like uh, the letters of probate, you're able to attach them here and choose a file and you're able to upload them, and then you're able to click on submit. So in this case, I'm not going to attach any new documents because the same person is uh, in the approval letter and click on yes.
So after you have entered your beneficiary, uh, you, you will notice that the process button is now active. So at this point, you're going to click on this process button so that this application may move to a land admin officer who will now process your list details for this uh, new list for a uh, change of user. So you will click on process. And after clicking on process, uh, you're able to see that your payment status is complete and your list status is ongoing. So meaning this application is currently at a land admin officer's desk and they're working, uh, they're working on it. So I don't know if you have any questions at this point and then maybe I can show uh, the next step. So at this point, your list is being prepared and then I can show the last bit of the list preparation application. Uh, so there is Nelly here. Nelly, Nelly is asking about the completion of COU. I think this is a. You may need to write a list you want so that you can be able to ask that question so that it is clear to us. Then in, in the meantime, there is Ruth who is asking how long it takes for a change of use approval. If uh, it has delayed, then you can you can you can over your details through the chat section so that uh, it can be followed up and you can be told if there are any issues, you will be advised accordingly. Thank you. So I think we had uh, explained that uh, we we will share uh, we'll share uh, an email. Uh, so, so that if you have any personal requests, maybe you can ask, you can ask there's someone who was asking if uh, they made an application which has been stuck for three months, maybe you can just uh, put the details in that email, which we shall be sharing at the end of this, at the end of this webinar, and then you're able to um, answer, we're able to maybe get back to you with more details. So uh, someone is asking, uh, can an extension of lease be done on Arthisasa? Yes, I think uh, under the lease uh, processes, you can see there's allotment, amalgamation, change of user, uh, extension of lease, extension of user. There's a subdivision and subdivision scheme approval letter. So for people who are renewing their lease, you will go through the allotment letter. Uh, the the platform which you're using will not be having renewal of lease because if you're renewing your lease, that means you have an allotment letter and you shall use that to process a uh, new lease. I think Nelly... Oh, how do you complete a uh, change of user of the parcel that has not been convert, uh, gazetted for conversion? I think uh, at the point of uh, after doing the development control and you're given your approval letter, when you go back to survey, they're able to issue you with uh, uh, with a new number, which now uh, your new list shall be processed with. So I think at the point of uh, getting your approval, you're going to get a new number if you have not already started the application. Yeah, I don't know if... Uh, I've answered your question, Nelly. Um, maybe I can just uh can just uh, demonstrate using a different application after the application has been, after your list has been prepared and uh has been fin uh is already done being prepared, your application will come uh will come back to you, and uh after it is back to you, you're able to see. Your it will be at eighty percent. So when you come to leases, uh, you shall receive a notification asking you to please uh, add person to execute and an advocate. So when you come to where the leases tab is and click on view, uh, you will be able to see that uh, Leah, who is the beneficiary, can now, that has, now has a button to add person to execute. So they can click add person to execute. So if they are representing themselves, they can click on self. If uh, there's an attorney, they can click. If it's if the beneficiary was a company and maybe they are directors, they can click on directors and add uh, the the directors using their thesis ID. So in this case, I'll just proceed with the self uh, option and click on save. So after doing this, since uh, I'm the one representing myself, I shall receive a space where I shall be signing. 
So this signature is for your certificate, is for your list document. So you shall sign here. Uh, there is a YouTube link to explain more on how you can sign. And uh, also there are different signing methods. So you can sign with another device. You can scan QR code and maybe sign with another device that you're more comfortable signing with. You can send the link to your phone number and uh, you're able to have a link that will direct you to a platform where you can sign. You can uh, send the link to your email and uh, you can sign or uh, copy this link and you're able to now sign on a better platform. So in this case, maybe I can just sign with my mouse. So if you're comfortable signing with your mouse, you can sign. If you're not okay with the signature, you can also clear and, and, and sign again. So, and then when you're okay with the signature, you can save it. So after you have uh, after you have added the person to execute and you have signed, there will be a button for add advocate. So you will have uh, you will need to have an advocate to represent you, uh, uh, to witness your signing for the list document. So you'll add an advocate ID uh, at this ID here, who and whom they will be able to see this application on their end. So I'll just add my advocate in this case. So after adding the advocate's account using the Arthesis ID and click on search, you will uh, you will be able to see that we we can see the advocate and you'll add the advocate. So on the advocate desk, they they will accept to represent you and also sign. So I can log in as the advocate and we're able to see uh we're able to see the application. So after I log in to my to the advocate's account, the advocate will change their uh their account to an advocate's account, and uh, they have all they've also received a notification that they have been added by Lair uh as a witness for change of user application. This one, and when you click uh there, you're able to see uh the notification. So I'll navigate to the application, go to change of user. And then you're able to see your application that was launched uh, 20 hours ago. So click on view. So the advocate will see the uh, two buttons, either to accept representation or to reject. So the, in this case, the advocate will accept re to represent. And then they'll also be required to sign. Uh, so uh, the advocate will sign here through the different methods that I had explained earlier can sign with another device and for more clarification you can uh, watch uh, you can navigate using this youtube link and you can learn more about the uh, adding your signature so in this case in this case the advocate will just add their signature and uh, save it uh, and after saving you're able to submit this application to the registration department and uh, after submitting this application to the registration department, you uh, after it has been processed, you'll be able to receive your, if it's a leasehold uh, parcel, you'll receive your certificate of lease and uh, your leasehold document. If it's a freehold doc, if it's a freehold parcel, you receive your lease for freehold and uh, your certificate of title. So after everyone has executed and they have signed, you can now submit to registration. Yeah, so uh, this is the last step of uh, this process. And after that, uh, you will be informed when to come and take your list document and your certificate of list. So if you have uh, any question, you can ask. Uh, there are a few questions on the chat box. So on the, on the chat, um, what happens for a property that was undergoing subdivision? And the new parcels were gazetted for conversion before the old title was surrendered. Uh, so if you're doing a subdivision, so your old title was uh, was maybe an LR, you'll just, that is the title you're going to submit and the new titles, the new subplots are going to be prepared uh, under the new numbers. If they had been gazetted, they're going to be prepared under the new numbers. Yeah. But for the title, you'll just surrender the old title. 
that is if you had already initiated uh, uh you had already that done the subdivision at survey someone is asking what is the difference between extension of lease and renewal of lease maybe mr evans can explain that oh uh, thank you for this question uh actually it can be confusing but it is very clear the difference is very clear when we talk about extension of lease is where uh, the lease term had not expired if you had a 99 year lease and you have uh, the term has gone up to around 90 years meaning nine years then you can you can apply for an extension of lease but if the lease expires uh, then the application there too will be the renewal of lease. That's the main difference between uh, extension of lease and the renewal of lease. Both of them, you are applying for a new term. The ownership remains the same. But uh, what makes the difference is at what level, at what point were you making that application? If they are not expired, then it's an extension of lease. Uh, if it had expired, then it's renewal of lease. I hope that's clear. Thank you. Um, I think Monga is asking, uh, does the application have to be initiated in the proprietor's account? You no. Know, the application can be initiated by anyone, can be initiated by an advocate, can be initiated by a physical planner, a surveyor as long as you quote uh, the person who is supposed to appear on the, on the list and the certificate as the beneficiary. Yes. Mm. After conversion, do we collect the new list in Nairobi or is it sent to the relevant registry? So I think as we have explained before, uh, this process is for parcels that are in Nairobi. So you will collect your new list and your and your title here in Nairobi in the registry. Yeah. Uh, there has been a contact that there is an email that has been shared there. So if you have any inquiries, please uh, send them to that email rcsasa at rc.geo.ke and cc saramasive at rc.geo.ke. Uh, th this issue of conversion, I think for now, it's within Nairobi. So we have not moved to other registries for conversion purposes. So uh, for now, it doesn't apply to the other registries. But once we get there, then it will be advised accordingly. Thank you. Uh, uh, I think uh, Okum is asking about other the other webinars. So the webinars are being uploaded on YouTube, so you can check if uh, the webinar you're asking for is on YouTube. If it's not there, uh, it will be uploaded soon enough. Yeah, so you can just check there. They will all be uploaded on our YouTube channel at Arthesasa. So if you have any other question, maybe you can ask. If you would like to speak, you can raise your hand and then you can ask your question. Uh, Jane, you can go ahead and ask your question. Your hand is up. Yes, hi. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm asking a different question, but over the same. Huh? I did an application for transfer, LRA 33, for the last three months. The same has been pending for assessment and evaluation for payment of stamp duty. I don't know whether there are challenges over the same or what is it so hard over the same. I don't know whether you can assist. Uh, maybe uh, you can uh, reach us through the emails that we have provided and you can uh, quote what your issue is and then we are able to get back to you kindly. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Sawa, sawa, Santi. 
Mar uh, uh, maybe Charoni, you can ask your question. Uh, and maybe I can ask answer Marion. How does change of visa work for other counties? So we'll just do the manual process as uh, was done before. Go to the counties, get the uh Plupa DC uh that seventeen, and yeah, and then uh you come for the approval here in Nairobi. Yeah, just the same way it used to be done. Hello, I uh, clarify found the same. Uh, I think it's clear that this system for now is working within Nairobi, but if you have uh, a change of user in Meru, in Machakos, wherever it is, it is processed in the normal way from the counties or the relevant documentation is done and then it's forwarded to headquarters for final approval which is done in the manual space before we roll out to those counties. Thank you. Sorry, can I go ahead and ask my question? Yes, you can. Uh, it, it's a follow-up. It was not quite clear from um, the one I had raised on the chat. For a property that is listed for conversion, but the change of user process had already begun and the approval letter issued, um, how do you complete that process? Do you file the change of view, the lease preparation and then also file a uh, replacement of title application on the other end? Or is it sufficient to just do the lease um, preparation application and then the registry will do the rest? I'm not sure you had your last part, but I think you're asking about if it had already been done con uh, conversion. So if you had already done a survey, you will just proceed to do list preparation. But if you have if you had not initiated the survey process, you'll have to initially do the replacement of title application. Uh, so a follow-up on your answer. Do you then indicate the the number that has been listed for conversion, the new number on um, where we're indicating the parcel number or do you indicate the former one and then the new one will just appear? You indicate the, uh, the former number. If it was an LR, you indicate the, the LR number and then we're able to get uh, the new number from survey as it was issued. All right, thank you so much. Uh, I think, uh, I don't think we have any more questions. If you have any issue, the the email has been provided. You can reach us there or through the customer care platform and we'll be able to get back to you. I think uh, for now we, we have finished uh, our session. and Maybe Mr. Evans can uh, finish, uh, can end for us. Oh, thank you, Madam Blair. <coughs> uh, I think as you hear is this is, uh, as I said from the beginning, is one of the webinars that we are trying to reach to as many of our stakeholders. Uh, so this is not the end. If in case there is something that is not clear, you are free to reach to us through the system so that you can be our assist over the services and to make it uh, easier as you work from wherever you are. You don't need to be, when you come to the office, you come through the ticketing system so that uh, there will be somebody who is waiting for you and uh, you will be served. Uh, and I think for now, we thank you very much for creating time and being ready to learn and be a good ambassador so that you tell the people whoever is out there for the services to be done, tell them that we are now closer to you and all work can be uh, uh, addressed. Thank you very much uh, for being available. And uh, we now look forward for the next webinar, perhaps in the next Tuesday, and it will be advised accordingly. Thank you very much.